नमस्ते स्टूडेंट दिस इज संजय नाथ टूडे सेशन इज ऑन द अर्थ एज अ प्लानेट पार्ट वन चैप्टर वन स्टैंडर्ड नाइन जियोग्राफी इंट्रोडक्टरी विजुअल द यूनिवर्स विल बिगेन इन फ्यू सेकेंड्स From the primordial cloud of gas and cosmic dust, gravity forces the stars. Gravity connects star system together with the vast galaxies. and steer them from the journey through the unbent expanses the relentless flow of time has driven the evolution of the universe and creating extraordinary wonders these new stars forming from the elements blown out from supernova explosion new stars being born from the remains of dead one and it's from the universal process of death and rebirth that we emerged because it was in nebula just like this 5 billion years ago has given birth to the primitive sun clouds of hydrogen collapsed further and further under the force of gravity and the life cycle of new star has begun the star was born that will come to know as sun around it the network of planets among them was the earth debris left over from the formation of solar system collide with the earth the great impact called the splat theory describes the separation of mass from the earth gave birth to moon recent evidence and theory on origin of solar system and earth a flashback our solar system 4 and 1/2 billion years ago and at center the young sun the theory that emerged that the young sun surrounded by a cloud of dust and gases as that cloud cool little grains of cosmic minerals formed so all these grains of minerals floating in the gaseous cloud moving around the sun and they started to bump into each other as mineral grains in the solar dust cloud as bumped into each other stuck to each other and they grew into smaller pieces of rock orbiting the sun over the next few million years some of them collided and grew bigger and that biggest object was the molten earth soon the young planet had so much gravitational pull that it began to attract bigger and bigger objects as they crashed onto its surface earth size increased with its every impact the bombardment was so intense that it only took about 30 million years from the planets to grow to almost to its present size the young earth was made of billions of pieces of rocks randomly stuck together slowly earth began to cool down from outside to inside it took 10 million years and developed the crust enough to sustain primitive life form Now we'll learn the position of the earth in our galaxy and solar system. 
The solar system is located in the Milky Way's Orion star cluster. Only 15% of star in the galaxy holds the planetary system and one of the star is our own sun. Revolving around the sun there are 8 planets. These planets are divided into two categories and it based on the composition terrestrial and jovial. Terrestrial planets includes Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars are primarily made up of rocky material. Their surface are solid and they do not have print system. They have very few or no moons and they are small. Now we learn about Earth also called the blue planet. The water system helped to create the only known environment in the universe to sustain life. Followed by Earth is Mars might have also supported life about 3.7 billion years ago when the planet had a watery surface. Now we'll see the Jovian planets on outer solar system. It includes the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn and this ice giants Uranus and Neptune. The gas giants are mainly made up of helium and hydrogen and the ice giants contain icy rocks, methane and ammonia. All four Jovian planets have multiple moons, ring system, no solid surface and immense in size. The largest Jovian are the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, the second largest planet. Its massive rings are wide enough to fit Earth and the moon apart and is barely a kilometer thick. After the gas giants there are Uranus and Neptune. Uranus rotates on its axis tilted. Next to Neptune, the outermost planet in the solar system and one of the coldest. Orbiting the terrestrial planet is the asteroid belt, a flat disk of rocky objects and remains of cosmic dust since the formation of solar system. From the microscopic dust, particle and to the largest known object known to us asteroids. The next belt is debris of dust particle and it lies in the most distant icy copper belt. The copper belt is also home to the dwarf planets such as Pluto. The zone is also called the birthplace of many comets beyond this is the Oort cloud and said to be the edge of our solar system. Now we we'll learn about the shape of the earth. So exactly what is the shape of the earth? You might be thinking the earth is round. However, you look back in history, the long list of stories of people and unpleasant theories of falling off the edge of the earth. One of the notable theory of Christopher Columbus. When he set sail to the new world in 1492, had fears that he and his crew would meet a terrible end falling off the edge of the flat earth. Interestingly, Columbus was later credited with the discovery of determining that the earth is in fact is round by not falling from the edge of the earth. However, we know that earth is round for thousands of years. The fact the Greek philosopher named Pythagoras who was also a mathematician made the observation more than 25,000 years ago that the earth has to be round simply based on the logic but that's not enough. How exactly we know the true shape of the earth? Now we will discuss the four pieces of evidence or the proofs. Proof 1. It involves the moon, the our closest heavenly body in our solar system. People have been observing the moon for thousands of years and they have noticed the lit up portion of the moon has different amount visible at different times. This can be seen in this diagram. The only way these strange shape of illuminated side, the crescent, the gibbous, the first quarter and the last quarter, the only way these shapes would be visible is in fact the moon is round. Now the earlier astronomer named Aristotle lived more than 1700 years ago. Noted this and he went a step further, he observed the moon during lunar eclipse and what Aristotle noted was that 
during lunar eclipse the earth's shadow cast on the moon and the shadow was not straight but rounded aristotle claimed that the only possible shape that can always cast a round shadow is a sphere next is proof number 2 imagine going down to the ocean and looking out in the distance at the vast sea ahead of you often far the distance you will see the horizon horizon is the point where the sea meets the land shown with the horizontal black line on the screen imagine a ship is out for a nice sail along the high sea now as a ship farther away the ship going to appear smaller and smaller that is the rule of apparent diameter something get more distant it appear more smaller if you watch carefully the ship get farther and farther away they will actually appear to sink over the horizon now one of the two things could be true first either the ship is sinking but more likely explanation involves the shape of the planet if you see in the diagram the dash line showing the line of sight from the observer point as the ship sails away one can see the most of the ship for a while as the ship go away from the horizon the ship will going to appear to sink in reality it is not sinking it is only traveling along the curved surface of our planet as you can see in this picture a big ship at the horizon we can only see the top of it but if the ship appear closer you can see the entire ship with the city of toronto you can see the tower and the top of the building but if you go closer you will able to see the complete or the entire building it is because of the curved surface of our planet let's move on to the proof 3 it is a very interesting one look at the image of the earth for the moment let's imagine a person standing on the surface of the earth now this person could weigh themselves on the scale to determine how much do they weigh how you weight is impact is a result of pull of gravity the more gravity more you weight now how much one can weight is based on the distance between the person and the object center of gravity therefore the closer you are at the center of the earth you will weight more further you are less you weight let's imagine one person standing on the oddly shaped planet just like a big oval shaped egg as you can see the person is little bit closer to the center of the earth that result into the person will weigh more compared to the person on the other side as you can see in the animation so if the earth of any shape other than a sphere our weight would differ a lot but the fact is if you see the earth and the place of the person on any point you want on the planet and weight these people all will weight same as at every point there is the same distance from the center and it is proved that earth is a sphere now let's move on to the proof number 4 and this one is very easy and concrete evidence and it is the gift of modern time and technological advancement it involves the photographs and satellite images This picture is in the video was taken in 1972 from Apollo 17. As the capsule flew their way towards the moon, on the way they took pictures or photographs of the earth. What's so unique about this picture is that first time ever mankind have seen a complete sphere shape earth from space. But for many, the confusion on the shape of the earth was clear when Galileo came into the picture. In 1990, the Galileo spacecraft took this time-lapse video of rotating Earth, and this became an undisputed evidence. In fact, today we have many evidence of satellite and space station called ISS taken thousands of pictures and videos of Earth in his real shape. Hence, it is clear that Earth is round in shape. 